Hi dearies, today we're going to be making the molded version of Kate Perry's Fascinator. I remember this video was sponsored. I'd also like to use this opportunity to thank the sponsor of this video. She wants to be anonymous. Thank you so much for enabling me to get the materials and all that I needed to put up this video on YouTube last week we molded the fascinator base so we already have that ready so here are the items we'll be needing today so you'll be needing your one inch thick stiff crinoline your bias matching color to your cinnamon your needle you'll be needing your bed cage veil some call it fascinator veil what do you call it do let me know in the comment section below you'll be needing your alice band <laughs> i put two thinking then tread matching tread and this is your seven inch weight crinoline this one has a pattern i'll let you know how to use that later then you'll be using your hat wire and my famous hat wire cutter if you need one this shows you that i sell you can let me know in the comment section below and i'll get that to you. okay so our mold has dried and now we need to take it off the hat block so you can either make use of a plier like I'm doing here or you make use of screwdriver or you can even use a scissors that has broken or is blunt that you don't make use of anymore the next thing you want to do is cut out the excess from your um, cinnamon base that you have molded so that's what I'm doing keep watching and learning once that's done that makes it very easy for you to remove your um, molded fascinator base out of the hat block so if you still have a little extra left in your when you cut it out before you remove it from your mold you want to cut it you don't need it too long as in the excess flap underneath it doesn't need to be too long at all it should just be enough to contain your hat wire unless you want to make a different design or something okay so now of course the next step is to put your hat wire now your hat wire helps to keep your fascinator base in place so it keeps that shape that it has formed so now i've measured and you saw the hat wire cut it shoop, shoop. next thing to do is to join your hat wire keep watching and learning <laughs> that's done you know your hat what the cinnamon base the fascinator base is see-through so you need to wrap up your hat wire so that what everyone is seeing is red you're not seeing hat wire size that hat wire do rust some of them not all so what we do is to wrap it especially if you're not putting it underneath um, padded if you're using any other material so that you don't see rust showing on your fascinator or your hat you wrap it up with um, bias or trimming or anything so now I'll show you how to wrap it up now I'm using the round method so to speak I'm not using the loop method I brought in my pegs to help me out to make it faster <laughs> If you've gained anything so far, please do give me a thumbs up. If there's something you have just learnt, do give me a thumbs up and write in the comment section, I've just learnt something. Or you let me know what you just learnt, what you didn't know before that you have learnt. Once you're done, you take your fascinator base and you place the hat wire inside, the covered hat wire inside the fascinator base. Fold up the flap a bit. Then 
Then you use your uhu gum and start putting it at the edges. Allow it to dry a bit before you close it so that it doesn't stain your fascinator. And if it doesn't close when, when you've done that, you can put glue again, allow it to dry and close. To Then you do that all the way around. You can use your peg to help you to keep it in position for a long while so that it sticks well. you cannot find any of these materials in your local store please do check the description of this video you would see amazon links you will see aliexpress links you could click on them and make your purchase or you could also click on my diy kit link and make your purchase there there's someone there to attend to you or you could contact me via my whatsapp or the diy link to shop for you you have various options, so you have no excuse to make this Fascinator Kit Perry's molded version of Kit Perry's Fascinator. Once that's done, the next thing you do is take your bias and then you cover the edges at the back of your Fascinator base so it looks all nice and smooth. Now, some people like to use Peter Sham here, but I don't know why. Peter Sham doesn't just come out smooth for me. I think when the length of what you're using to go around is um the width sorry of what you're using to go around is um smaller it helps it makes it much smoother but if you do well with peter sham then ride up with ride on with peter sham <laughs> next thing i did was to place my fascinator on the um alice band now i first of all put my alice band on the mannequin head or dummy head whichever what do you call it do let me know in the comment section below okay so i placed the um fascinator base on the alice band to get my position where i want it to be exactly and i sewed it first of all from there before i took it off to continue sewing you know that helps to make sure that you're placing it exactly where you want it to be watching and learning how i do the sewing <laughs> Do you always jump off before you reach the end of my videos? Nah, nah, I would advise you to stay to the end. Why? Because I always have a game challenge once a week. And that challenge gives you an opportunity to attend a free class in the Ventcraft Academy. Isn't that cool? So, my advice, stay to the end of this video. Aside getting knowledge of how I made this, because if I may make it in a different way, of, I mean make something that you already know in a different way and it will be much easier and better don't you think so so it's good to stay to the end of the video catch ya if you took note of the width of the Alice band that I used now when attaching when attaching fascinator holders I think I've done a uh, a video on fascinator holders which fascinator holder to use for what so you could check the description of this video you would have um, a video on the various fascinator holders that are available but anytime you want to use just check and see which one will them um, you know sit properly with the fascinator so the next thing I did was to get a patch of, um, I'm making use of straw mat here, I think it's also called um, paper mat. I cut a piece of it and just watched the foldings on how I would use it to cover up the sewing that I did at the, as in how the sewing that I did attaching the Alice band to the fascinator base. Now I made use of straw mat because it actually almost looks like your cinnamon so it will just blend in. If you have enough cinnamon piece left of course make use of cinnamon piece to cover up the back
it's time to put our bed cage fill on top of our fascinator base now what i did first of all was to chop off the edges to make it straight <laughs> Then I took it on top of the fascinator base to get the measurement of what I need to cut out. You know, I need it coming out on all edges. Now, because of that, I saw that I would need not just one layer. I would need to join two layers together. It's possible you can get a big, um, what do you call it? A big width of fascinator veil. But here, this is the width that I have. So I had to... joining two together and after i measured i realized that the length i need was 21 so what i had was that um fascinator veil of nine with nine inch width 12 21 inches length i had two pieces of that the next thing i did was to take um uhu gum and put on the edge of one and joined the other layer to it after I did that, of course, I saw some glues showing. And also, if you use B6000, because the mount is very slim, you it, it will just come out just exactly what you need. Now, if you want to know which glue is um, the best to use for which situation, check the description also of this video. You will see um, the link to the best glue to use for different purposes when making your fascinator. If I made use of um, of um, um, B6000, I don't think I would have needed to spray, but I didn't have any B6000 available. And another thing you need to do is confirm that the shade of the car paint spray you want to use is exactly the, ch the shade of um, the bed cage veil. If you see, mine was deeper. Mine was deeper, so it was obvious. But if you use the same color of carpet paint you won't be able to see it that's what that the next thing i took the merged bed cage veil put it on top of my fascinator base and i sewed it to it but i just took you know those diamond shape that have some um, line line on it that's what i used to hold it when i was sewing it and i just showed it just in the middle <laughs> Then the other places around just like how when you're molding you do not south east and west that was what i did with my uhu gum please make use of b6000 i didn't have b6000 available and i used uhu gum but b6000 would have been the best to use in this particular situation <music> The next thing I did was to trim my fast my bed cage veil all the way around to form a curve and make it a bit shorter, closer to my cinnamon. Now if you've gained value from this video so far, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, my dear, you are missing. Seriously, you haven't subscribed? Ah, oh, okay. Let's help you out. Just look below. You see subscribe button. Click the subscribe button. You see the bell. That bell gets you notified of all my upcoming new of all new videos that I put up. You need to click that also. Do you know why why you need to click that? Because most times when I launch out a video, especially on Wednesday, it has a challenge, and that challenge usually gives you a free class in my academy. So I advise you click the bell button so you get notified and you'll be one of the first to watch the video and write the right answer. Although sometimes I do 
selecting random but supposing you're the only one that gets the right answer so you see that's good In our molded version of Kit Perry's Fascinator is to get your crinoline. I measured out 18 inches, but finally I chopped up more than that, so you can actually measure less. Then I started peeling off how do I put it, drawing out the hairs from the um, crinoline on the width side. That's how actually we make our crinoline feathers. If you've attended crinoline master's class, you already know how to make crinoline feathers. If you haven't attended, I do advise you attend because you get to learn plenty tricks and how to use crinoline to make a variety of things. I'm telling you, by the time you finish from that class, if you're very creative, what you would come out with, <laughs> people will be rushing to your store. So after I did that, I wrapped it up like so and began to sew it. it on my fascinator base and sold it to my fascinator base now please just watch carefully so you see how i do the sewing I took another part again, put it on the fascinator base to see how I the measurement that I need to cover up the shape, cut it off, and, and just watch how I sew it to the fascinator base again. After that I now made the you know peeled it off like so like I did previously keep watching and learning <music> you're done with that you cut it out to the length that you want a bit the height <music> the next thing I did was to take my um, my stiff crinoline of course you know is one inch width that is two inch on both sides and adding an extra just make it three inches so that by the time you sew it will be able to enter in that's i'm measuring what i need the material that i need to cut out the width of the material that i need to cut out and the length just make it a yard so as many loops as you want to make you can make so that's what i did then after i cut out my material i fold it on the wrong side and sew it all the way down once you're done with that the next thing to do you turn it inside out
stiff crinoline if you don't fold it you won't be able to take it inside you fold it push it inside like you see me doing <music> And then these are the foldings and the sewings you need to do to make sure you have your lovely loop. Keep watching and learning. your loops this is how you attach them i made three loops in total actually use the measurement of the as in i placed it on the hat to know the measurement that i will need to but this should be 12 inches okay so 12 12 12 so i was right one yard <laughs> like to thank the sponsor of this video once more if you want to do same you can contact me and let me know that you want to sponsor a video you give me the design you want me to do and i'll get that <music>
you think that I have forgotten? No, when I give a promise, I do keep to it. Now we have the winner for this video. I put up this video some time ago and um, I asked some questions. And the winner is Olufumilori. Congratulations. Please do contact us in the Ventcraft Academy reception and make a request for your gift. Yeah, so today's challenge, what other method do you think can be used to get Kate Perry's fascinator. In fact, to get it exactly, what method was used to get Kate Perry's fascinator? Do let me know in the comment section. And whoever gets it, you get to attend for free fascinator class three. Now to watch another video to gain another knowledge. Don't stop here. Click that next video.